Welcome back. In the last video, we got started with Azure Pipelines, wherein we saw how we can set up continuous integration for your code. In our case, we used Terraform, which is an infrastructure as a code, and set up a CI pipeline right from the scratch. We ended the video on a note wherein we wanted to get the status of our pipeline using the badge, and that's what we did. Uh, before that, we we kind of uh, set up a continuous integration using the pipeline as you can see in front of you uh, we we pushed our code and then we saw how you can kind of uh, integrate your work notes or rather tasks uh, which you have the stories which you've got using the hash uh, sign and kind of map your story number with the commit with each commit as well what next? So what we're going to now do is we're going to set up a release pipeline. Now your code is ready to ship onto the infrastructure, onto the environment rather. Uh, in our case, it's Terraform code. However, be it .NET, Java, Node.js or Python, Go, any language, you're feel free to use the pipeline to set up the code uh, uh, for integration and deployment as well. So let's get started and set up our release pipeline. So we're going to go to the releases and then we're going to click on the new pipeline. And as you see that we've got the pipeline in front of us. Uh, Artifact is a section wherein you mention from where the release pipeline should be picking up the code from. So what you can do is you can either give your Azure repo. So if you haven't got your pipeline set up, what you can do is you can hook your release pipeline directly with your code repo, be it on GitHub or TFS or Azure repo. Since we have got the pipeline set up, what we're going to do is I'm going to select the project, which is the code red project, and then the pipeline, which was code red project CI. Remember, this was the one we have set up in our last video. So that's what we're going to select. And we're going to click on add and we're going to make sure that it picks up the latest code. Click on add and then we're going to start adding the stages. Now, the stages is could be you can consider them as your environment. Yes, let's suppose you've got dev, non prod, and prod uh, environment in your organization and you want to make sure that your code kind of gets shipped to all of these environment one by one so you can make the stages according to that so what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty job give the stage name which is going to be dev and yep now we're going to start adding the steps the first step is the agent now the agent is going to be ubuntu 18.0 Zero 04 which is the latest one and this this you can select the artifact right from here as you can see that the drop folder where our artifacts kind of sits uh, and this is where all of our code is kind of sitting so what we're going to now do is we're going to we have already built this code as you can see now we're going to deploy onto azure infrastructure what next what we're going to do is we're going to start pulling up the terraform inet again So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it as Terraform Inet and then provider we're going to be Azure Resource Manager and then the configuration directory. Now the configuration directory is going to be is where your code is setting. So in our case, if you click on the three dots right over here, okay, code red project CI and under the drop is all of our code is setting so we're going to select the drop hit ok and you can see that drop is right over here select so what you're going to do is you're going to select the subscription right from here select the first one and then as soon as you hit the refresh button it's going to pull out all the resources underneath the subscription in our case it's just one resource group um, that is azure devops and then the storage account um, and then the container this is specific to Azure uh, for your case uh, it could be different it would be different actually uh, if you're not setting up for, for uh, Terraform code for your continuous deployment so it's gonna be different so so yeah obviously it has to vary for different environment uh, once this is done we're gonna add another task that's gonna be Terraform apply click on the add and then Terraform 
validate and apply rather and then I'm gonna select the working directory which is the code red and the drop this is where all of our code files are and then if you have any specific parameter I don't have any a subscription is gonna be the Azure subscription one and yeah that's pretty much all I guess I'm gonna hit give it a name to my release pipeline um, can code red CD probably yep and then hit I'm gonna hit the save button uh, you would see that it has already got the pipeline setup now you can extend your pipeline from dev to non prod to prod how to do that you're gonna gonna click on the add button right over here and either you can add the new steps or what you can do is you can kind of clone already what you have so what you can do is you can just clone it and name it as non prod rather non prod and yeah just give it a save button and then you've got a copy of dev which is going to be renamed as prod hit on save and and that's pretty much all you've got all your environments ready you can customize these tasks however in the for the sake of demo we've kept it same so what next uh, now we're gonna create a release right from here and start deploying on the so you can see that the version the this means the version of our ci pipeline uh, ci pipeline has got many um, uh, got multiple uh, artifacts so these artifacts the number signifies which version you want to deploy somewhere i want to deploy the latest one uh, i'm going to hit the create button uh, we might uh, get an error and that's what we're going to debug if in case we're going to get one so let's see um Let's deploy on dev. Hit on deploy, and you would see that it's gonna start deploying. If you go to the release, it's gonna give you some information about that it has started to queue the uh, queue your deployment, and now it has started to progress, which says it has got two tasks. If you're gonna hit on the progress, you start seeing the get to see the build progress or rather deployment progress the initialization has been successful the plan has failed so let's look so it says that fail to instantiate provider as your RM to obtain the schema dot terraform so this was dot terraform was created while we were running the CI pipeline Whenever init is terraform init is run, it creates a dot terraform folder and it downloads all the plugin for you. Since we've already got the init step included in our deployment process, we don't need this step. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do write a small little uh, shell command, which would be kind of removing the dot terraform folder from the build folder so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on edit now what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit our task get our so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna use a bash task how do you do that you're gonna go to the search bar right over here and type in bash it's gonna give you the bash task click on add move it to the top because we want to remove the dot terraform folder from the first step so we're gonna keep it as bash script you can if you have a script to point to a, if you have a file you can either put it into the file or click on inline remove the unnecessary email yeah so it starts with the echo hello world what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list all the folder then I'm gonna CD into the code red project which is code red because the terraform is underneath the top and drop and then probably I do wanna wanna do an LS and AL again and then CD into drop and as soon as I do it I do an LS and AL again this is just for 
my own purpose you might want to remove don't want to use ls and al every time dot terraform and i'm going to remove the dot terraform folder using rm hyphen rf that's so our script is uh, the commands are kind of ready now what we're going to do is we're going to save it and start a new release you can if you click on the view yaml it kind of shows you how you can incorporate this on your yaml as well which we're going to learn in our upcoming videos For now we're going to close it hit on save and then create a new release click on create go to the release 2 and if you see that it has got the connection with the agent now agent is ready to serve the deployment for us it's going to start the deployment which is in progress now now it's going to initialize it download the artifact for us artifact is nothing but bunch of code it has got the bash script bash script was successful now let's go to the inet and it has Feed on the version denied again. Let's go to the bash script probably. No such folder drop was there. So if we go to the CD drop. So let's try to verify what we have done. What we have done is we have gone to the no such file or directory let's probably try to revisit our bash script again try to edit this all right you see that there was a slight type over here instead of one under score you've got two underscore and that's why it couldn't recognize it that's why it was saying that there is no such folder with the name what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit the save and probably do a deploy again go to the in progress All right it's cute so go to the logs and see what it tries to do now Alright, so the first step is initialize the artifact artifacts are being downloaded from the CI pipeline. Underneath the drop folder, let's see what it does in the bash step. So it has now done the job, I guess. Now let's do the initialization and now it should start planning as well. So yeah, it has started to plan and apply for us, and you can see that the auto approve has been now done. And it's not it should now start to create the resources now you can see that there is no more error for the permission and now it has started to deploy our infrastructure on Azure if you go to the Azure hit a refresh and then go to the resource group you would see that it has started to create a resource already for us if we go to the resource group you would see that it would have a resource group coming up right now so it sees that the resources has been started to create uh, it is it's just trying to create the container now and it's gonna deploy the infrastructure and it would come up right over here all right so what we we have just noticed that we have just set up our uh, continuous uh, delivery pipeline however it was a manual setup so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the releases again all right and then go to the edit you would see that there is a continuous deployment trigger which means any time your new pipeline is triggered continuous integration is pipeline it has seen that a new build is ready to be deployed it's going to automatically deploy down to the dev environment so what we're going to do is we're going to it is disabled at the moment i'm going to enable it and there are certain pre checks as well which we're gonna do right now we don't need them so yeah so now we've got the continuous delivery pipeline ready so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit the save button before it I just wanna make sure that I 
replace the underscore right from here hit on the save and click OK so what we're gonna do is now so if we go to the release you would see that the dev is still trying to being created and it's still trying to create the Cosmos DB and the virtual machine now now if you go to the virtual Azure resource group you would see that the resource group has populated which we have just created what we're gonna now do is we're gonna cancel the pipeline because we don't need it and we're gonna delete the resource group right from here as well and we're gonna trigger a continuous delivery pipeline so we're gonna let it delete now we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our terminal visual studio code and go to the repo that's our azure devops repo and what we're gonna now do is we're gonna go to our demo dot auto dfrs and just uh, just manipulate our storage name so storage name probably let's keep it as azure devops azure devops code red storage probably storage yep and if you do a get status we should have one change and now if you try to get add and then get commit hyphen m change the storage name get push let's just give it a few more seconds now the changes are pushed if you go to our repo rather pipeline we should have the continuous integration triggered and yes it is triggered change the short storage name it is gonna generate the artifact for us and run through all of the steps right over here first it's gonna install the terraform uh, all of these steps which we have defined in our previous video then it's gonna initialize it then it's gonna do a terraform plan and that's pretty much all so now what we're gonna do is go to the release button as soon as the pipeline is finished the release cycle should be automatically picking up a new release we're gonna give it a few more seconds and it is just publishing the artifact for us all right Alright, the pipeline is now done. Pipeline is completed. If you go to the release, give it a few more seconds, you would see that a new release has been created. It has picked up the latest build, which was triggered using the pipeline, and now it is ready to deploy the newer version of your code onto the dev environment. Alright, that's pretty much all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.